Yo, what's going on everybody? It's David Palmer, The Leo King. It's late night, Tuesday night. February 7th going into February 8th, 2017. I just actually filmed my uncut. Thought I'd do a little, well, I was going to say fireside chat, but we're doing a little lit up chat here at my uh, home office on the couch. There's a couple things that I want to go over. One, we got some things that are going on in the astrology on Wednesday, and this is going to be a prep period before the eclipse, which is going to be happening on Friday. So we want to talk about that. The other thing that I want to talk about, and I'm sure you read in the description about the deception aspect, I made a post today uh, about people getting really caught up in a lot of the stories on TV and, 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 and even out of just like politics stories, just, just distractions. You know, there's a lot of distractions in the environment right now. There's a lot of us... Uh, there's a, lot, there's a lot of energy and there's an extreme amount of energy about to happen over the next couple of weeks. So I just want to have people, you know, prepared for, for what's coming and to kind of be a little bit smarter about what they're going to invest their manifesting energy into. Because there's so much going on in the astrology that I think it's so important to know what you're doing with this energy. Because... It's amazing. Like on one half, I'll be honest. These eclipses that are coming over these next two weeks are holy, holy. Well, they're holy, but they're holy cow, but Jesus, like in, like exact. So many exact aspects happening, right? So utilizing the eclipses is going to be a very big and a very I don't want to say concern, but, but, but it's important for everybody to pay attention to. Um, and it's important for everybody to understand them completely. That's why I did my video. I do, I do a whole video. If you want a video just on the eclipses, go to um, and check it out on my website, inclusiveastrology.com. You can purchase and you can get, it's a 40 minute video where I literally break up the eclipses. I show you all the alignments and I do my fun, awesome kind of thing. But here's... What I want to talk about as I'm multitasking right now, I'm sharing this to all my other pages so we can get a lot of people uh, in the chat in so we can all be live. But I want to say this. There is a cardinal cross on Wednesday with the moon in Cancer. It's going to oppose Pluto in Capricorn. It's going to square Jupiter and it's going to square Uranus. Uh, that is not comfortable, folks. That is not comfortable. No, 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 no. Especially as the moon is getting ready to apex and come into an eclipse. That is not fun. That is not easy. So I think a lot of people are feeling uneasy coming into the eclipses. You usually like to see some sort of positive transit kind of happen right before eclipses. But Jupiter went retrograde on Monday. And then, you know, boom, you come into Tuesday and the moon's in Cancer and already is making hard aspects. And then, bam, Wednesday it's into like... You know, it's not the easiest energy to come into, right? So, I think it's important for people to realize that this is not comfortable coming in. But believe it or not, uh, and what I talk about in this week's Uncut, if you have the app, you'll see it. Or if you buy it on YouTube. But I talk a lot about how amazing and how positive the eclipses are. And um, especially this one, this lunar eclipse coming up. But I want to say that this cardinal cross is going to make people feel very uncomfortable coming into the eclipses. Uh, you know, usually when we come into eclipses, there's some sometimes like a, a, a very easy aspect. But, you know, this is an emotional uneasy aspect. So a lot of people in the Leo King Astrology Room have been saying that they've been feeling a lot of anxiety. They've been feeling a lot of... Uh, anxiousness in in general with their body heart palpitations uh um just 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 overall uneasiness and that tends to happen when you get a lot of cancer energy and a Mar uh, and mars squaring it in its natural sign you're already going to get the kind of edgy energy emotionally then on top of that 
You know, we are in the air sign of Aquarius. It rules the nervous system. Uranus rules Aquarius, right? And Uranus is in Aries, which is in the head. So there's, and with Mars kind of pumping the head up and with Venus now in shadow period, there's a, and Jupiter went retrograde. You know, there, there's been so, the, the universe is pulling a lot of levers right now, okay? And it's about to go wham, bam, bam with the eclipses. So, and especially with this cardinal cross moon, which, I mean, it's not the craziest alignment, I'll be honest. I mean, it's a temporary alignment. Whenever you have a moon that's going to trigger something, it's fast, right? It's quick. The moon moves fast. So it's like a moment in our life. But it's been this build up to this moment of uneasiness before we come into the most hypersensitive energy, which are the eclipses. And these eclipses are dealing with not this Leo Aquarius eclipse, even though they're happening with the nodes in Pisces and Virgo, which are very sensitive places. It puts people into a place of chaos. And I think what's happened is we are in a world right now that is surrounded by so much chaotic energy and the collective, because, because I focus on the collective consciousness, the collective consciousness is going through a lot of chaos right now. And it is unnecessary chaos. All the chaos is, is people not aligning their life, not looking at the situations and realizing maybe it's not that big of a deal. You know, it's like, come on, like, this is Virgo. It's like, whatever the mess is, we'll, we, it can be cleaned up. And I think that um, I, the reason why I named this video with deception on it is because if you actually think about what's going on in the, the, the world right now with the Neptune and the South Node in Pisces and Chiron in Pisces, there's so much energy that has to deal with this deception energy of, and deception can go in very deep waters, whether we feel like we've been deceived for 2,000 years with my whole movie, ageofdeceptionmovie.com, and it's free, by the way, or it's on YouTube, goes into the deception of the Age of Pisces. Or as light to the deception as maybe you're kind of confused in the chaos of what's going on. Remember, Neptune rules the media. Neptune rules all the media. So it doesn't matter if it's the right or the left. I think people are getting way too caught up in like, this side's right and this side's wrong. And, and, and Neptune also rules where it almost makes you feel like you have to pick a side, right? You know, uh, the church always makes you feel like you need to pick Jesus or hell. Like there's no in between, right? Or, you know, Neptune energy, like when it came through last time was the Civil War. Like, are you going to pick the North or the South? Like, Neptune before that, when it was in the 16, uh, I think it was 90s, right? Yeah, so 160 years. Yeah, 1690s was, in 1692 was the Salem Witch Trials. And it was like, uh, you were either a witch or you're not a witch. You know, there is such a high chaotic polarity somebody just said that word and i think i can see things i can see what's what's going on in the live chat but you know that that polarity consciousness is chaotic because that is not what we're supposed to be in my presentation that i did uh my in my movie age of deception i talk a lot about monotheism and that was something that the catholic church you know uh really brought up how they wanted to separate uh, the divinity and the humanity from Christ. At one time it was together, monotheism. Uh, and then it wanted to make it more like a stereo, a left and a right channel. Like, no, you can't access, a human can't, is not the same as divinity, which you could argue is true. You could say, you know what, divinity is God in this higher resource and we're humans and we don't, we're not perfect and we don't have that whole divine understanding of life. So there might be a separation. But you know what's interesting is to me, they're together. Without each other, they don't make it. And so I believe more in monotheism of that divinity and humanity are hand in hand. They are the equal uh, parts of, of, of each other. And I believe that to access God or the higher universe, that I truly believe that divinity and, and humanity are together. And I believe that the divine forces are what manifest in human form. And I believe the human form divine, divinely manifests the d divinity itself. So there's chaos going because we are seeing people buying into 
especially on the news, people are buying into both sides of this argument that is separating from a higher cause of finding that divinity in life. But more importantly, really realizing with the North Node in Virgo that everything can be fixed. And I hate to use the examples, but let's just use the example. So the travel ban happened. People freaked out. The universe fixed it. The travel ban got taken away. The court system did it. People got issued waivers and they got through. So it's kind of like people are freaking out and not trusting the universe that it will all work out however it's going to be. Maybe Trump's going to be wrong in a million positions and might be right in one or two. Maybe Trump will be right in a hundred positions and wrong in some others. But there is going to be order and the universe will clean up the mess fast if you trust and allow it. And especially if you're not going to buy into the chaos. You know, when you look at like, you know, you go into a, a house that was at a party for like two, for a weekend, right? I remember when I was a kid and I went to college, well, I didn't go to college, but I go to college like dorms. I'd look at the place and I go, I can't even believe this shit stuff. There's like throw up on the ground. There's like, you know. This dude's sleeping over here. That couch, I would not sit on for the life of me. It looks like somebody peed in that couch. And it's chaotic, right? The energy's dirty. It's chaotic. But somehow it always got cleaned up enough to make the party go on the next weekend, you know? <laughs> I don't know how it happens, you know? Or sometimes you'll throw a party at your house. I remember when I was a kid and I got in trouble. I, I threw a, 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 a party at my mom's house, you know? And I got in so much trouble and it was, you know, we had like I, probably 50 to 100 people there in this condo, three bedroom condo. And it was not, it, it, we couldn't handle it. The cops came. We had, you know, beer cans everywhere. And I remember looking at the house being like, there is no effing way. And I looked at my brother like, we're going to clean this up. We're going to get caught. You know what? We cleaned it up so good. Not, my parents had no idea. They didn't know. But we were stupid enough. We were stupid enough to still have one bag of trash that was still in the trash, you know, like, and, and my stepdad at the time had found there were some beer bottles in there. We got caught. So it's interesting to see like in how the universe is working right now, like people are getting so lost and chaotic and then everything's turning out all right. People are losing themselves as well into these kind of like imaginary ideas of what could possibly happen in life right now instead of what reality is actually happening in the moment. One thing about Virgo with the North Node is the moment. Now, well, is it happening right now? You know, it's like we can get a, a lot of the news in the media cycle that we're seeing is like the possibilities of what could happen and the fear that it instills on people on both sides of, 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 of having you sitting and hanging, because what does Pisces also represent, is what the hanging in between worlds is like. So it's almost like people are hanging in between the fear of, well, this could happen, and this looks like it's happening, but maybe it's not happening, and maybe it could happen, and so what it's doing is it's fragmenting people like the lights behind me. I did the lights like this for a reason. <laughs> to have you see the chaotic aspect of what your energy is doing when you tap into the chaos, you feed into the stories and you don't stay into the moment and how it's affecting your day to day and realize that everything and, and all things can be fixed, cleaned up and, 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 and done okay. Somebody just asked if I'm doing my eclipse party. Of course, on Friday I'll be doing the eclipse party. Spiritual dance music. I, I don't miss new moon or full moon. Uh, so, you know, it, there's a lot to say about what you can do with your life and realize that anything chaotic can be brought to order right now and fixed and cleaned up even if you don't believe it. Remember, this is a very serious moment in our lives where Saturn is nearing the end of Sagittarius. It's heading towards the galactic center point right now. These are very high degrees. These are very sensitive degrees. And these deal with, you know, us learning to not fall for stories. What is Sagittarius is the story take, maker, okay? 
It's a pot, you know, with Saturn there, everything that could be positive gets turned negative with Saturn, right? Because Sa Saturn is now in Jupiter space. So it's like the party pooper, you know, it's like we're trying to have a party in life right now, right? Sagittarius. And then guess what happens? Saturn's in there and I get every minute. No, nope, no, nope, sorry. So every story that comes out, there's like this party pooping element. Today, when I woke up and I saw one of my buddies, one of my old DJ buddies post this today and I felt the same way. I was like, I'm ready to like deactivate my Facebook, deactivate my social media. And even though this is my money, this is how I make my money, this is my business. So I can't, like I literally can't. But it's like, man, I want to block it out. And I, and I finally blocked all the news networks from sending me notifications because it's like, it, 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 it doesn't feel good anymore. Everybody's freaking out. Everybody's freaking out. Everybody's so stuck in the chaos. And there is nothing to be so scared about. There is nothing to be chaotic about right now. This lunar eclipse, I'll be honest, is one of the freaking best ones I've ever seen in a long time. You cannot ask for a much more awesomely aligned lunar eclipse, to be honest with you. Like, it really, like, doesn't get any better. It's just us falling victim to stories that don't have merit to them, haven't been researched fully. Um, I thought the most interesting story that came out this week had nothing to do with Trump or anything like that, but had to do with this climate issue and how the books or the, the report, and there was, there's a whistleblower coming out, uh, who is saying that the, the climate was was doctored to get them to get, sign these bills to spend billions of dollars on climate research. Now, I don't know the truth until I look at the data, so I don't know, but I think it's interesting. But I follow a guy, it's called um, Suspicious Observers on YouTube. Guys, look him up. He's got like 235,000 YouTube subscribers. And every day he looks at the solar flares, he looks at the x-rays, he looks at um, the solar weather, he looks at, you know, the density of the, the solar rays, and, and he looks at the radiation, he looks at, more importantly, how it's connected to the coronal holes that happen on the sun and how it affects the earth, how it affects the weather on the earth. He's awesome. Um, his name's Ben. I forgot, I forgot his, his full name. I'll, hold on, it's Ben... I think it's, yeah, David Davidson. Look him up. Ben Davidson, Suspicious Observers. I've been following him for like two and a half years. And he has been following the weather patterns for years and has always said that the climate thing is BS. Now, this guy is a, does science. He literally has the top scientists in the world that reach out to this guy and he does his own conferences and everything. And it's so interesting that there's so much deception going on it's crazy. It, blo it I mean, it blows my mind. It blows my mind. Especially now that there's a whistleblower coming out saying that that whole thing was doctored. Now, give, I'm not going to say that I know what the data is or anything. I just think it's an interesting thing. Um, and I think that it's really interesting, especially to see all this, this stuff going on uh, where I use the Super Bowl as an example it was like everybody thought that they were going to lose and then they came back and won. Everybody thought Trump was going to lose and then Trump came up and win. Everybody thought that the climate was horrible and now it's not as bad as it says it is. I'm going to touch on a really, really, really sensitive subject right now. Woo! Yeah, that's how you guys know you guys are talking to the little king. And probably, I'll probably get a lot of backlash for it. But why not, right? So when you go on Netflix, okay... And you watch all these documentaries, especially the animal ones. Now, I am in total agreement. there's massive animal cruelty in the animal food industry as much as it's there. And I, trust me, my fiance is a vegan and she will not eat animals because of it. And I admire her for that. But... The way that Neptune works, and especially right now with all these documentaries, that doesn't mean that every animal place is like that, okay? Like, one of my favorite places to eat is this place called Burger Boss. I'm the DJ for them. And they only do grass-fed meat. And literally, and all ingredients natural. 
And if you were to go to where they get their beef, and even though I don't eat beef, but I eat chicken, but even where they're free range chickens and everything, they're treated like normal things and they don't even know they're gonna go. And I know it's a sensitive subject, but we gotta be real, okay? So these documentaries love to highlight, you know, the worst of the worst of the worst of the worst, right? Okay? Now, if you were to do the math of how many billions of people are on the planet and how many millions or maybe hundreds of thousands of animals, uh, okay, slaughterhouses there are, okay? Okay, there's got to be, just do the math. It's not like there's 10 in the whole world or something. That's impossible, okay? Okay? Okay, I'm just trying to use the, the way that the emotional... Dis, like and, and let's stop using the word deception, but but the idea like an idea can come into your head right now and a belief system and just you can be so convinced after seeing one video that is all that, that wave it's rampant like that everywhere. You know what I mean? And trust me, I think it's horrible. From those videos I see, I can't even watch them. You know? And I've done a lot that I can to Cut myself away. I, good thing I have a vegetarian fiance. You know what I mean? Like a vegan fiance. She helps. Helps. She's changed my opinion on a lot of things, and I eat a lot more less meat than I am. And that's not easy being a double Leo. Trust me on that one. But I will tell you that these Neptunian things that are coming out. Convince people so fast of something without thinking through and, and doing the Sagittarius thing and looking at all of the understanding of it, right? All of it. Okay? All of it. So, people got to, you know, realize that's how life works right now. And during these eclipses... There's so much to manifest with positivity and greatness and love. But if you're going to choose to use this energy and go get behind stuff that might not even happen or is it, it, it is part of that kind of like where you just are so lost into it, you can't see outside of it. You got to be careful because this is a moment where you can rocket ship yourself to the greatest love, to connecting to powerful dreams, to raising your vibration in a higher levels, or you could just be part of the system per se and wrap yourself into, you know, I don't want to call it wasted energy because it's your energy, it's your life. But I'm a moon in Taurus and I realized this today. When I give my advice to people astrologically, I give it from a moon and Taurus and sun and Leo perspective, which is the best of the best of the best of the best. If you want to waste your time and energy with things like that, I kind of come from a kingly place. Like, do you think the king spends his life all day? And I'm not referring to myself, but we're referring to just the third person king, right? Do you think a king spends his day wasting his time on energy that just is going to go nowhere and give him the greatest life or her life as queen possible? No, okay? No. So when I give my astrology horoscope in the way that I give it, I give it, if you want love at the highest degree, and if you want Taurus, you want the greatest life possible, manifesting in the great thing possible. So people, I think, can take my message in a certain way, like, oh my gosh, like you don't think about anything else. Well, if I was an Aquarius with a, with a moon in uh, Scorpio, yeah, I, you'd probably hear a total opposite message. I'd be telling you to Go spend a bunch of your energy and go out there and pick it and go get crazy on people and rebel and do all these crazy things. I'd probably be that guy. But, you know, you know, I look at that as a son and Leo with a moon and Taurus. Like, what a waste of time. Like, I could just make a video and have everybody and, and make my own kingdom and, and, and make videos for people and, and change their lives and, and empower them themselves instead of go yell in the street and not let go of something because moon and scorpio is detriment because it has a tough time letting go of things moon and taurus knows oh that's not worth it let's let that go it's like you know if i'm through a drive through and it spills the drink like i'm not gonna go god oh my god i was needing that drink to be perfect and oh my god or if, you know spilled milk happens i'm not gonna cry over it it's like you know 
Moon and Taurus kind of knows, oh, that's not that, it's not worth getting that emotional over. So it's like, you know, people right now, especially with all this Neptune, especially with these lunar eclipses, the lunar eclipse and all these eclipses coming with the Pisces energy at the peak, and this is the end of the no to last that coming, and you're going to hear me talking about this for the next couple weeks. You know, you can sit in chaos all you want. You want to be part of the chaos? Go join the chaos. There's plenty of chaos for you to go join in. Woo! Which is totally where the South Node is. Or everything's together. Look at my cat right here. Do you think there's any chaos going on? We're in the same universe, same planets, same shit's going on on TV that's in your life right now. But look at my cat. I'm creating chaos for my poor little kitty right now. Look at her. There is no chaos going on. All right? There's none. Huh. And she's a Pisces. Zero. Okay? No chaos. I created a little chaos for her, but even her, she goes, she goes, Daddy, it's okay. You can give me chaos anything you want, anytime you want. There's no chaos. When you actually turn off that TV or you turn off that news or you turn off that live feed of, you know, you know, I'll use Elizabeth Warren as the example today. I'm sure you guys don't know I'm not a fan of her just because I did in my astro, and it's not because she's a Democrat or anything like that. It's just because I just don't like her energy. She's got Mars, Mercury, conjunct in, uh, in Gemini and Neptune squaring it right now. And I call her the barking dog, you know, um, she, I think she has some good things to say, but she's Neptune squaring her Mars and, and Mercury. I would never listen to anybody with Neptune squaring their Mercury and Mars. They're just literally blabbermouths that are just, th there's no, uh, you know, consistency. It's like, it's like all over the place. And, uh, you know, it's like, and I don't even know why I went here, but I'm just saying like, if you want to be part of that chaos machine, go ahead. She, that girl is going to be the pinnacle astrologically of chaos. Um, of course, Donald Trump is going to be the pinnacle of chaos because he's having all these transits happening with Saturn opposing his lunar eclipse and Chiron squaring it all. So he's the pinnacle of chaos. Bernie Sanders is the pinnacle of chaos. You got Uranus conjunct his moon right now. You want to go join that? Go be part of that chaos. Who else has some chaotic aspects happening to them right now? Those three, though. Donald Trump, Elizabeth Warren, and Bernie Sanders all have chaotic aspects happening to their chart right now. So if you want to get more anxiety and more revved up and more anxious and feeling spraddled, go connect with those three all day. Go watch all the things they got to do because they got so much happening to their chart, especially with the, mute, with the mutable stuff or Uranian with Bernie Sanders. It's crazy, you know? Even Saturn's affecting uh, Bernie Sanders too. You know, Bernie Sanders, this is his last great stand before he ends his journey with Uranus and, and the moon. It's making him feel electrified and then it will shoot down, you know, when Uranus goes in Taurus in a year. Uh, it'll be off his moon and the Bernie Sanders story is going to be over just as fast as Ron Paul's story was over in 2008 and then tried to come back in 2012. You know, I think a lot of people got to like, uh, people are too wrapped up right now into things, you know. Um, it, it's time to, especially with the sun in Aquarius, it's time to disconnect from things that are pulling from your happiness. And a lot of this is this network news show. You know, if you understand the Palladians and the Reptilians, and especially if you understand the Reptilian agenda, the Reptilian agenda is just about ingesting your energy to feed and, and it's fear and um somebody put uh ron paul you know ron paul was has always been my number one if i were to be political he i actually in 2008 helped his cause literally went and volunteered in 2008 and then in 2012 i did some stuff with my um back in the day too but um just because i believed in his ideology but and he didn't he was not chaotic about it you know but you know it's like this is a time to learn to disconnect because 
you don't want to feed that reptilian force right now. And you want to feed that Palladian light. There's a, there's, there's, this is a Palladian eclipse, you know, and, and I, I'm about to do an eclipse video that I'll put out Friday, but, and then of course I'll do the, the, the lunar eclipse video, uh, or the, the live DJ special, but you know, this eclipse coming up is Palladian. It's full of light. It's full of ascension. It's full of positivity, but if you're going to choose to be in that chaotic road and get fired up and you know I saw one of my buddies today just I mean all he does all day is like literally post every everything he can about why Trump's horrible why this person's horrible why this senator did this why this person did that why this guy's doing that it's just like wow like that's what you're spending all of your energy and time into it's pretty like sad there's a lot more other things in the world to be paying attention to. I mean, but that's my opinion. That's, that's other people, might, that might be their deal. You know? But today I kind of had it. I was like, you know, I, I, I'm just ready for it all to, to kind of move on. And for people to, to bring love back, and, and love starts with the self. It's not about, this is where, this is, and I'm going to end with this in this talk today. The problem here with this whole love thing is, especially with the North Node entering Leo in May and the South Node entering Aquarius, Aquarius is going to be broken for 18 months starting in May. And when I mean broken, whenever you have the nodes, especially the South Node, enter a sign, it literally is at Disneyland when they literally go, sorry, lot, ride is closed, okay? The ride's closed. This area doesn't work that great. We need to fix some things, okay? So what does Aquarius rule? It rules community. It rules a higher ascension by understanding things. It rules interconnectedness. It also rules rebellion. And part of the, and it rules friendship and so forth like that. The problem with the South Node entering Aquarius, which I don't think people are prepared for, are people that are trying to revolt right now or join revolutions or get all riled up. It's not going to go down to really good. I'm just going to just say from an astrological perspective because it's going to be opposite of love. Now, they're going to say they're joining for the cause of love, but... The cause of love is to be an inspiration, which actually doesn't mean that you need to go revolt. If you notice, one man, Martin Luther King, can do twice as much as, or let's say 15 times as much as, and I'm just going to put my opinion out here, than, you know, 100,000 people marching down in Washington. One man and his speech echoes. Not the 100,000 voices we heard, Right? Because love and inspiration and the sun, we remember every day. We don't remember every full moon. We don't remember every, you know, lunar cycle. We don't remember all, every planet position. We always remember the sun every day because it's so bright and it affects us. We remember that suntan. We can see the scars it leaves when we, when we got that burn. And, and so Leo is all about being an inspiration. And there's kind of a solo element. You needing to find it in yourself. You need, needing to find the power within yourself. This whole like, you know, well, Joe's going there, so maybe I should go there, is going to be not really the bombest uh, aspect that's going to happen. Okay? It's not going to work. Millions of people protested wars, whether it was Iraq, Vietnam. You could even go all the way back to any century you want to. They, uh, you know... The church has been protested against for doing things. Every, every and, and nothing changes by these things. But, you know, one voice can echo into existence and change things forever. JFK can make one speech and not need one army of people. Just his words can move people uh, just in individually to be inspired and change the way that they live their life. It's much more on that aspect. You know, uh, it... it it's like, um, gosh, I'm getting all, you know, my guys are showing me all these flashes of movies, you know, it's like whenever, uh, like, there's this old cartoon, Gulliver's Travels, like, you know, 
when Gulliver lands on the beach and everybody goes, dun, 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 let's store it in the beach and they have their flames and, dun, 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 and they go and they tie him up and they bring him to town and all, and, and all he had to, all Gulliver had to do was get up. You know what I mean? And oh, he was so nice to everyone and they were so scared of him and you and it's like, relax, like everything's going to be fine. You know, I think a lot of people right now are going to bring their pitchforks out and their fires and get out there and, and revolt over this next couple years. And with Saturn and Capricorn, there's going to be a lot of control and law and, and issues around it. I'm not saying that it's going to restrict people's voices. And I don't think that's going to happen. Because it's quite the opposite. It's people need to kind of find a voice and either be a leader of that voice or not. I, 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 don't, I don't think this is going to be a time of collective groups making energy or power. Um, unfortunately, I don't know if the, um, the whole Dakota pipeline access thing is going to work now that everything's kind of moving into Leo Aquarius opposition and, uh, South Node's about to enter Aquarius soon. Not looking too good. I don't, I don't know if people are going to be able to stop, uh, kingdoms from being built right now, you know, um, however they are, especially on top of Regulus, you know, we'll see, um, you know, it's, it, it's, you know, times are going to be changing really fast. I'm, I'm looking really far ahead. I know we were supposed to talk about Wednesday and, and tomorrow's Cardinal Cross, but th the main message I got out of today from my guides and all day I wanted to say this, and I actually planned all day to do this lit Facebook live was to be about that. The South node is entering Aquarius soon. And I've said this for years. The south node is what the ride is broken. Right now, the ride of Pisces is broken. Your illusions, your deception, your subconscious is broken. So be careful about it. Your tendency to come into addictions, your tendency to fall off the wagon on anything, self-sabotage things, fall into you know aspects where you feel lost or confused about, or you lose yourself, or you go on some spiritual quest without really having a grip on things. You got to be careful on right now. Next, it, that's coming for 18 months, starting in May, is going to be South Node and Aquarius. This revolting and all this stuff is really going to be about whether or not you can find your own power, not power through many. Um, because it's almost going to be just a bunch of cattle out there, you know, yelling and screaming with nowhere, and, or maybe not even an idea of where it's going. Just, just, just a. Re, a, a you know, a rebel against things, right? It's like, you know, rebel against the king, you know? It's like, because whatever the king's doing, and then it's like, well, do we have an, a plan? No, we just don't like what he's doing. It's like, okay, well, maybe you should think about something and do something or create something that alters it differently instead of just always, you know, doing the Aquarian thing and bugging out and trying to disrupt it and revolt against it. You know, um, the Leo energy is going to teach people, well, if you want to, Revolt, if you want to change things, you got to go make the change. You don't fight it uh, because you're actually inflaming the situation and giving more power to that of what you don't want. So if people want everything to end in what they're seeing on the news that they get, they're getting so wrapped up about... Uh, don't give it power and give your power to creating the opposite of, of what that is and manifesting it, not just reveling against it because in, in throwing, you're fueling it. That's it technically based off what the astrology says right now and subconsciously lost and chaotic and freaking out and um, anyway, that's what I had to say for tonight. I just did the uncut, so I'm pretty beat. I did a lot of readings today. I got more readings tomorrow. And, uh, of course, more videos to shoot tomorrow as well. Um, but um, I hope this helped. Hope you guys are all doing wonderful. Thanks so much. Uh, you know, there's so much in my Age of Deception movie. Just go YouTube, Age of Deception movie, The Leo King. I think it'll help you guys out a lot about knowing what I mean about deception. And how intense it is. I could talk about that subject all day. But I did a whole four hour movie about it. And it's right there for you now. Thanks so much for all your support guys. Truly appreciate it. Thanks for being part of uh, Leo King App. Of course if you want to watch your daily horoscope. 
you know, and the uncut, which is coming out tonight, make sure you check that out, the Leo King app, leoKingapp.com, or you can check out, of course, uh, my February Eclipse special. It's an awesome 40 minute special video only focused on the eclipse with me doing all my crazy stuff that you guys see I do, the play by play, understanding it all. You can get that at inclusiveastrology.com. Thanks for all the support. I truly appreciate it, and I will see you guys later.